Welcome to the Strong Single and Human podcast, a real look at single parenting, the ups and downs, and how to navigate life with kids on your own while keeping sane. Covering subjects such as domestic violence through to fussy eaters and solo dating. I'm your host, Claire Martin. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, This is part two of the interview I did with Lindsay McGinley regarding being a single mum and dealing with the death of her husband, John, 21 months ago. What what do you do for mindfulness, though? What do you, because I like, my mindfulness is like sitting in the garden, like with meditation music on for like 20 minutes, half an hour or whatever. And that's sort of where I, I did, um, so after my relationship break up with Oscar's dad and also my heart operation and and very and I did a very stressful job as well at the time um like I paint but I paint with (laughs) this sounds really weird but I paint with my hands I'm very tactile I like to feel the paint with my fingers and my hands I don't necessarily Mm -hmm. like to use brushes so I actually a lot of my pictures are splodgy painty finger stuff but yeah and I'm only just doing pouring I'm only just learning about pouring acrylics which I really like because of just the patterns and you know how they are um but that's how I you know it's it's very weird how you and I are friends and then we've both sort of converged in this like arty farty like world that we're in to deal with our stresses our single mum and and you know like because sometimes I'll just go okay I'm in a real bad funk and if I don't go out for a run or I don't, you know, I I put on really loud music and I did it this weekend. God love Queens of the Stone Age. I put Queens of the Stone Age on really, really loud because I didn't have my son with me. And I painted for like most of the morning. My neighbours thought I was nuts, but yeah. Yeah, well, I, I've got what I call my shedio, <laughs> which yeah. is a very large 16 foot shed. Um, in my back garden, which I use as a studio, so hence the word shedio because it's shed and studio, so it's a shedio. Um, and I've got into the habit of it of doing the school run, picking up Molly from work, coming home, going in the shedio, and that's me for the evening. I'll come out, cook dinner, eat the dinner, go back in the shedio, and I will just sit there, create. And some stuff that I've done is absolutely horrendous. And then other stuff, I think, oh, actually, that's not so bad. And the thing that I look at and think that's horrendous, I'll go back to until I'm happy with it. And it could take yeah. weeks, it could take months. I've got some pieces in there that are not finished in my eyes, and they've been in their years. Um, but it's the release you get from literally doing the here and now. So going back to the mindfulness, you are concentrating on literally what you are doing for this minute of your life. You're not thinking about what's happening past or what's going to happen in the future you you literally concentrate on what you are doing for this very second um there's a lot of different ways that you can practice mindfulness you know um objects eating something anything like that so um grapes are always great for this because you can put it in your mouth and you really think about the texture of it the feel of it the taste of it the smell of it everything else and you're concentrating so much on that one object that everything else that's clouding in your brain and is stressing you out and everything else disappears because you're concentrating on a great sounds ridiculous oh wow but no no really, no really, but um it but really, that's only because because meditate and meditating you're just concentrating on breathing in holding your breath yeah. and breathing out and all of that sort of thing so yeah no concentrating on an object is a similar thing because it's just focusing your mind down to that single one thing like you were saying about the music and things like that music is a great outlet for me i'm oh. it's very unlike me not to have music on in the background in the car yeah whatever it drives the children mad because they don't like my music and i don't like theirs <laughs> well so Soph and i are quite in tune with our music so that's not too bad um you know going going sort of back to all that it's been very stressful with um, COVID because Molly, who was living in London, um, she was put on furlough. She had split up with her fiance, but was still living in the same flat as him in in London. And in the April, when we were still in lockdown, she had to move out. 
So she asked to come back here while she was on furlough, which she did, and then she's not left. So <laughs> I've gone from being a single parent to a, you know, a 14-year-old who was having trouble coming to terms with the death of her dad to then having my 20, my eldest child back, who's always been the hardest out of three of them. Yeah. Um, I, I ended up with her back and she's now been here, well, 18, she's now been home for 18 months. Wow. She is moving out next weekend. Yay! <laughs> so, um, yeah. and a new partner who's lovely, um, a tattoo artist and thing. She's, they're moving in and getting a house together and starting life right, together. and everything. But being a single mum to a 28-year-old living under my roof has probably been the biggest challenge. Mm. Um Blimey, yeah, twenty-eight man. That's... She's an adult. She's got her own thoughts, her own, you know. And we clash. We clash because we are so similar. Um, and it has caused big strain on our relationship, and it's caused yeah. a strain on the spot with Sophie as well, because Sophie always saw her as the big glamorous sister who works in fashion, who does all these crazy makeup looks, and yeah. you know, I mean, her all... makeup is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, her makeup, knowing her when she was a little kid and then seeing her yeah. now as a 28-year-old, like, makeup artist who does her face in all these different, like, well, just different scenes and different yeah. ways that she does her face. I just look at it and go, my God. It's quite, <laughs> um, really yeah. A very talented girl. Yeah. Um, it has put a big strain on their relationship because Sophie was loving her time with her big sister going to stay at the flat, going to London to see her big sister, and it was all really glamorous and everything else. And she came back down to earth with a very bang when Molly came home and realised actually it's not as glamorous as it seems because she's here all the time. So um, I think her moving back out again is going to give us that distance to make our relationship stronger again. Yeah. Um, you know, all three of them. A- Amy's been up in Liverpool now for five years, and I miss her death. And then I have the other two. Amy is your favourite because you're always really nice to Amy. And I'm like, Amy's not my favourite. You're all the same. However, Amy does not live here. I don't see Amy every day. So we don't argue like I argue over who's going to walk the dog, who's going to do the dishes, who's left that on the floor, or, you know, oh, I think you need to help your mum a bit more and things like that. So it has been... The, the last six months especially and the, the last lockdown we had in the UK was really difficult for all of us because we were yet again thrown together in these four walls, not being able to express ourselves or do anything about it. Um, and you drive each other mad, you know. And yeah, I'm, the, well, I'm the one who has to calm it all down and sometimes yeah. I don't feel um so that's how do you do how do you deal with that because look I know I know like being in Australia here New South Wales is has been 12 weeks in lockdown um Melbourne which is where I am well I've I'm the same period of time as Sydney because I'm 12 weeks in lockdown because ours merged because we had quarantine in the middle of it but um I think Melbourne guys have been in lockdown maybe for six weeks now I think this might be six Mm -hmm. weeks of the sixth lockdown that we've had over the last two years. Now, how did you deal with it in the UK? Because the UK was reporting like thousands oh. of deaths a day and like we've not got, you know, we have one or two deaths a day, but you guys, that must have been scary. Yeah, it still is. Um, we are still, where I live, we are still one of the highest in the country. Wow. Uh, but the government have just gone, do you know what, let's just get back to normal. Um It won't ever be normal because we're all, you know, I'm still wearing masks when I go out. I won't not go into a mask. But I've noticed since they 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 brought everything back, less and less people are wearing masks. Um, You are going to like me who will continue to wear them. Um, And I think the biggest impact was on Sophie with school because. She needed to be around her friends and everything else, and she's not been able to, and it really has affected her mental health. Yeah. Um, she's really struggled, and now got now they're back at school in normal situation. 
um, she's finding it really hard, really, really tough because she's been on her own now for that long and away from everybody else. Her anxiety being around people is really, really high. Wow. And so I've, in fact, the last couple of weeks with her has been really challenging because she's really been struggling. Um, and, and I have to sit there and I know what she's going through and I just can't do anything to help. I can't yeah. change anything. I magic wand. Um, all I can do is sit and listen. Um, and I'm really, really grateful that I have a really close bond and relationship with all three of the girls because I have always been one person that they can come to because I'm the one constant they've always had. So I do, sometimes they, they overshare, which yeah. I'd rather and they didn't. Um, yeah. I, I find out stuff that their friends are getting up to that I really don't want to hear. Um, yeah. But in a way, that's quite good because that means that they feel comfortable enough to share information with you that potentially, so you've got that relationship with them that potentially another parent wouldn't have. So they share and are open with you so you can at least advise and point them in the right direction. I mean, they're not necessarily going to take it, but. John was there for them for 16. You know, he he brought all three of them up, really. Um, and they would go to him about certain things, but now yeah. they come to me about everything. Um, sometimes, like I say, I wish they didn't because it's like, oh, really? Um, but no, it, it, having that kind of relationship with them is a bit of a blessing, really, because like you say, there are so many families. You know, if you're in a working family, and you've got a mum and a dad there, and they're both working and they're out, and you're in after school care, and this. You don't see them. You no. you barely spend any time with them. You know, I, I was privileged in the sense, well, I say privileged, I, I couldn't work and I still don't work because of my health. Um, so I was a stay-at-home mum with Sophie, which I didn't have with the other two. And that made a lot of difference um, with the bond I had with her. She was also a very poorly baby. I had a really horrendous pregnancy. Um, most of which was spent in a German hospital, which was not the nicest thing. Um, so well, I was really yeah. fully with her. So we we did have a, a, a strange bond as a, as a when she was born because she was taken into a different hospital. Um, she was in um, intensive care in the, in the kinder clinic for three nearly three months. And I wasn't allowed out of the hospital I was in when I gave birth for three days. Yeah. So she, she had she was taken away from me. So there was a gap in our bonding. So it was really important to me that I spent all this time with her when she left. Um, and the girls as well. So I always, you know, I wanted them to, Amy was a handful when I had Sophie because she was jealous. So you get all the sibling rivalry and things like that. And like I say, John was away so much at yeah, that so time. Yeah, had to deal with it. So, yeah, so I had to deal with that. But then now... Having had them grown up and me being that one person they always come to, I know now if they were ever in trouble, and they have been in trouble, I'm the first person they come to. So I wouldn't change it. You know, I'd never change. No. uh, uh, Look, yeah. Yeah. I think I think our lives and the journeys we go on teaches us the lessons and makes us the people that we are. And, like, you know – yeah, I mean, I, I know I'm in Australia and, like, stuck here in lockdown with a five-year-old on my own. I've got no family, but um, mm. but I've got the most amazing neighbours. And it, only only this afternoon, my neighbour was like, do you need anything? Is everything okay? And stuff like that. So, you know, I have the most amazing guys around mm. me. But, um, yeah, I think we everything happens to us to colour our lives and give us a journey that, um, yeah like I'd like a smoother journey please I'm like not sure at- yeah. <laughs> but then maybe I've not made the right choices and the the world has had to kick me up the ass to get me to make the right choices and therefore throw yeah. me into the situations that I have and but when you're on your own you have that just that you have that choice to make your own yeah. decisions so I also that being a single parent is sometimes a lot easier than being in a couple yeah um, because there's only one set of rules. There's only one way. There's only one person that they can play off. They can't play you off against anybody yeah. else. 
Um, but there's also the challenges of when they do go and see their fathers, when they come back, they are hell. You know, you, you, I have, you know, especially to cook from country to country, because I still made sure I spent time with my ex-husband as much as I didn't like him. But she had a right to have a yeah. dad and everything else. And I, I made sure that relationship, she was foul when she used to come back. You know, it would take me two, three weeks calm her down then she'd speak to me to, like the way she spoke to me the way she behaved the way she kicked off the way she used to bring John and everything else saying oh well, you're not my dad and all this sort of thing so having that ha- having that second marriage with two children that didn't belong to him was always a challenge but he was so patient and he was so calm and you know and I was always still the discipline you know the one who gave the discipline and we uh, team um, but sometimes team games don't always work. And so I'd, I'd be really like, happening. And he's like, oh, oh, don't be like that. Like, when you're on your own, it's like, no, that's not happening. Mm. And that's it. Yeah. You, you, there's no one to go, oh, no, just let them, let them do that. No, I said, no, that's the end of it. Have your tantrum, get to your room, you're finished, come back out, we'll talk. Um, that side of it, I find a lot easier But when I'm watching Sophie, as I am at the moment, having meltdown after meltdown after meltdown because she's not doing so well, God, do I miss somebody to share that with, like to to unload that with? Um, And you sit there lying in bed at night sometimes and thinking, am I making an absolute dog's dinner of this? I sit there and think that. Or (laughs) am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? Am I doing this right thing? You know, um, I think we I all, that- as as single parents, I think we all sit there and think that whether we're fathers, mothers, or whatever. And I, I definitely think that. And I go, oh, I should, I could have handled that differently, or I could have, you know. But there's buttons being pushed, and you're yeah. tired, and like, you know, you've been in lockdown for 13 weeks, so it's just, yeah. And we're it's learning. Learned. There's no, there's no manual with bringing up kids. I wish there was, because you know. And something that works for one kid doesn't work for the other one. And, you know, so, yeah. And they've all got, and, they've all got different needs and you have to kind of accommodate them all um, and make each one of them happy at the same time and make sure that they're okay and that they're on an even keel and that they're, get, they're doing okay. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm lucky, I suppose, because I suppose the biggest, biggest um, influence I've ever had really is my own mother. You know, as a teenager, I'm not going to tell you what I was like, but put it this way: it was not pretty. Um, I was I was terrible as a teenager, and I used to sit there and think, "Oh my goodness, if my children treat me the way I treated my mother, I'm never going to cope with this." Yeah. So I made changes. You know, I had her as a role model to know what worked and what didn't work. You know, and she's the first person I still ring and go, mom, this is happening. What do I do? You know, she's still my biggest support and still my biggest influence. Um, and we now have an incredibly close relationship, which I'm really grateful for. Um, because this journey is a difficult journey and, you know, I can look back and think, well, actually, mom, you didn't actually do that the way I would have done it. And look what happened. So I can see even Sometimes I say to her, no, I don't agree with you, mum. And she's like, just try it. And I'll try yeah. it and go, actually, you were right. It's annoying when that happens. Um, gone beyond. No, but I, I know, but I've gone beyond that now. I, I really do yeah. value her opinion because she's been through know, life. She's 80, nearly 82 years old. She has yeah. a lot in her life, losing 41 um, and all this. So it was almost like a bit of history repeating itself, which was strange. Um, but she has been there. Yeah. She is, she's my constant. Yeah. You know, like I am girls. So yeah, I must. Around. Yeah. I'm, I'm, look, know, I must always, admit, like, although my parents are in a different con- continent and, um, you know, it. thank God for Facebook and FaceTime and Zoom and all of those things because, you know, um, my, my son had gastro the other day and mum and dad are in the UK and it was like – 1 a.m. in the morning, which is great because it was like the afternoon for them. So he FaceTimed them while he was ill and horrible and crying 
while so mum could calm oh. him down while I just clear, <laughs> cleared everything that was like on the floor in the bed and everywhere <laughs> else because I you know I don't have that other person in the house to help me so you know now I calmed him I mean yeah. it's amazing. I mean, you know, it's just amazing. So although we are worlds apart and I don't know how people coped with uh, TV technology because at the moment my son is awake, but he's watching TV while we do this interview so he doesn't interrupt us, um, which is great because he hasn't. But, yeah, I mean, I don't – well, I suppose you just got on with it, didn't you? And also I wonder if the community that you felt 20-odd years ago when you had Molly, when she was little, right – isn't so much a community now because we live on our blooming screens and our computers so much that we don't go and talk to the people next yeah. door. We don't have so, that community because we live in our little insular worlds of Insta and Facey and all of those things. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, uh, it, it, this is what I was saying. You know, when I left the UK to move to Germany, we still had, you know, and that really that and and yeah we have mobile phones and stuff but that was still in the days where if you had an english number oh, yeah it would cost you a fortune to use it in the in um europe and vice versa so we had two phones we had a uk yeah. one so that people from the uk could ring that number and when we had a and, and so i saw the change in the technology over the time i lived there so First time John went away to do this, and we had contacts yeah. through in the army. They have things called blueies, which are like airmail envelopes. Um, free, so you used to write those every day, and they used to have an e bluey system and things like that. But you know, last time he went to Afghanistan, which was in two thousand and eleven, we could we could FaceTime, we could face, we could Skype, we could do whatever. So the girls still get to see him. I still want to see him. So it made life a lot. A lot easier you know and I've still got friends that are in the army and you know Sophie's godfather for example he's not long back been back from Afghanistan either um I could message him and say oh Sophie's really I'm really struggling with her today and he's like for a message and two minutes later she's come down and go, oh I've had yeah. a message from Uncle Adam cheered her up straight away well no he, when my mum was doing this when my mum was being a single mum she had none of that you know she no way of, of I, I don't know how she did it. I really don't. She was working as a, as a full-time um, district nurse. So she was driving around here, there, everywhere. If, if one of us was ill, she still had to go to work. I mean, the amount of times I remember, she, she had a like yeah. an old Mini, like like the old style Minis that you used to have, was a, a company car, basically, as a nurse. And the amount of times I've laid on the back seat of those oh Minis my with God. my duvet and a bucket because I was throwing up everywhere. Work. I mean, when you think about it now, it just would never happen. Do you imagine if, if somebody had a child thrown back in the car and then they were going in to deal with someone's dressings or something and give it to them? I mean, it's, it may, you know, it, it really has highlighted all that sort of stuff with COVID. So, you know, and I do think I'm quite lucky in the fact that my girls are that much older because... I don't know how I'd have coped mm, with lockdown no. with toddlers. I, well, and, you know, I mean, how lots of colouring and scene and play doh and cars, and then if you need to get on and do work, then it's YouTube and maybe not feeling quite so guilty about him sitting in front of TV yeah. for three or four hours a day while you're trying to catch up on work. Look, it, yeah, <laughs> it's insane, and trying to get them. When playgrounds are locked, um, and I know why they did it, but when playgrounds are locked down and you can't take them out, um, you know, you can take them out for, you know, walk around the block or whatever, they get bored of that every day. So, yeah, it's just finding different things to do. Um, Thank God we have a bit of a big back garden so we can run around trampoline it in the back garden or run around playing soccer. But, yeah, it's a bit – yeah, it is a bit of a nightmare. But, okay, so – so yeah. what's the one piece of advice if like because I know you're you're 21 months into this bereavement malarkey yeah what would be your if if somebody was now going through this what you've been through in the last 21 months what would be your one piece of advice for them what would you like look after yourself 
before you look after anyone else. Um, because if you're looking after you, then you are there for your children. Um, take everything a step at a time. You know, take each minute, each hour. Don't overthink it. Try not to worry about what could happen, what might happen. Just deal with what is happening. Mm. Um, just mm. take your time. There's no rush. There's no. There's no race to get to the finish line you don't know what's around the next corner embrace what's around the next no. corner, whether good or bad it's it's an experience in your life that you'll be able to look back on and either smile or go oh my goodness what on earth was I thinking but opportunities are around every single corner and the world around us is changing constantly look at what's happening around the world be be that moment mm. and don't worry about what's happened in the past because you can't change that and don't worry about what you no. bring because it hasn't happened yet and just take everything in your own stride and take everything at your own level at your own pace because you're in charge of your own life um and it also gives really va valuable pieces of um what well, it's almost like giving your children a toolkit for the future if you can be that strong mm. person and you can be that person who in whatever situation you you have thrown at you, you are that calm person that will pick them up when they fall or, you know, be there at the end of the phone when, you know, for example, I had a phone call from Amy a few weeks back who had walked around the corner in Liverpool into Concert Square and they were playing my husband's song, Top, Val Top Volume, Everyone in the square was singing and it just freaked her out. She burst oh. into tears. Me. Shame. And just to be able to calm them down and just go, it's okay. It's going to happen. It's stopped now. Has the music changed? She said, yeah. And I said, well, that's it. It's done. Don't worry about it now. It's happened. You're okay. You're not back in that point. You you are okay. And, and think uh, of it as a nice memory because it's his yeah. song. So it's a nice memory of your stepdad. Um, yeah. And, you know. I think the big, big, biggest piece of advice is, is stay grounded. Do your environment. If you can, if you can feel ground, then. But also, it's, like um, you said, right? It's yeah. about not. So it's not also about holding everything in, though. So, um, and I know you and I. It's been it's been yeah. daytime for me and nighttime for you. And you've like got in contact with me, and I've done the same with yeah. you where it's been nighttime for me and daytime for you and I've gone oh yeah. my god talk me down from the sh you know talk me down from the ledge or whatever mm. and it is I mean in a way thank god we are yeah. by other sides of the world because then we can talk like that but you know it is it is giving yourself a right to fall apart as well yeah. to a certain extent but fall apart like to scream at the world to be angry to you yeah. know do to, to go through all of those seven eight emotions whatever it is and and to give yourself permission to do that it you know don't I found that it was like don't hold it all together because you're gonna you're gonna hurt you know you're gonna hurt your body you're gonna stress your body you're gonna have a you're gonna have a heart issue or you're gonna you know, how you know, you're not gonna it's not gonna be healthy for you. You need to have some way as an outlet to get it out of you. Yeah, I think if you keep everything in a tight ball, that ball is at some point gonna explode yeah. and it's gonna be messy. Yeah. If you can be true to yourself, if you can honestly, I think that's another another thing that I find key. If you can be honest with yourself and you are true to yourself and you know that in whatever situation you could have done it better maybe or it might have been worse but you're happy with what you've done and you're comfortable with your own self then you can be there for other people when they need you like your children um and they watch that they be surprised how much children watch us and watch how we react to things and if you're reacting hysterically they're going to be hysterical yeah. you know if, if you see a spider, which I'm, God, I hate to think the things you see over yeah, there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if I, if I can't freak out because then the children will freak out. So I don't freak out, freak out, but I'm the calm one. So I think if you're always yourself and you're honest, and be honest with them as well, whoops, um, be honest with them as well because they are resilient children and you can't, how can you sort of, um, 
how can you tell them to do one thing when you're reacting a different yeah. way? Um, so yeah. it's really, really important for you to be true to yourself and true to them because then that gives them the, the basis of life, really. Um, you know, be with other people. Don't, don't overshare. <laughs> Sophie needs to learn that one. Um, don't overshare with people. Not everybody wants to know the ins and outs of everything. Um, there are some things it's okay to keep to yourself, but knowing what is and what isn't is important. Well, and it's it's, a, it's about boundaries um, with kids as well because you've got older kids. Um, yeah. So you know, I mean, mine. I don't. I just there's certain things you don't want to share with your child when they're five or six. But like you know, you've got older children, so they've experienced uh, you know a, a whole myriad. They've had boyfriends and stuff like that, and they're dealing with all of that trauma. But it is about you know you don't need to tell them everything that you're dealing with as a or not dealing with but everything you're doing as a parent um as such oh they are my worst critics they really are you know i started dating again oh yeah their opinions I'm like well that is your opinion you can have that opinion it's not you know safety like i said well, you'll be polite well if i don't like them if, if in fact her words were well if they're a twat i'm not going to talk to them yeah <laughs> Well, they're not a twat, so you'll be polite, please. And she's like, mm, we'll see. Well, you know, yeah. and I'm but well, to have respect for your elders, you will do that. And she's like, mm. and then when it, when she has met somebody that I've been dating or something, she's been absolutely fine. Um, but you know, behind the scenes when I'm not with them or whatever, she'll have a wobble and we'll sit and we'll talk. You know, and she's like, Are you trying to replace daddy? And I'm like, No, nope, that will never happen. No. You know, and I've explained it to her as you do with children. That's, that's another thing that's an easy thing. If there are people out there who are currently single parents who are thinking of dating again and they're like, oh, well, you're trying to replace my father or my mother or whatever, that's not true because when I had Molly, I loved her with my whole heart. When I had Amy, I still loved Molly with my whole heart, but I had room in my heart to then love Amy unconditionally you can if you can love your children unconditionally you can go from one relationship to another relationship and it's a different yeah. relationship it's not the you're same not, but so the, yeah i'm never ever you can't like you're not going to replace gonna dad. Replace no and like i have choices yeah. to make um i have to make i've just i've made a very conscious decision that i will never get yeah. married again i don't ever want to be married and um, john will be the only husband got now um i won't you know i'm not ruling out i won't live with somebody or anything like that and it's hard for them to take it is hard for them and i remember when my mother remarried i went rails you know but your children are not going to be here for the yeah. whole of your life holding your hand and pulling and pull they are going to leave home well maybe not till the 28 <laughs> but they are going to leave home and do they want you to sit on your own and be upset and no. lonely? No. No, no, no. So they, you sometimes take it down and, and explain it to them in sort of really basic terms. You know, it's not that I never loved your father or your mother, but I have room in my heart yeah. to love other people. The same as I same as I love your brother or sister or your niece or nephew, I can love all these people at the same time. doesn't mean that the love that I've left behind or has left me behind is any more insignificant it's not it's just and I think that's the difference and I think that's a really important lesson life changes so quickly and it doesn't mean what you're doing is better or yeah. worse it's just yeah different. and look and yeah and it's about remembering that person for you know the good times and all of that sort of stuff well and the bad times <laughs> some of them as well but you know they're memories at the end of the day they're memories and it's honoring that person and doing whatever you need to do and making sure the kids are okay and then moving forward because at the end of the day life moves on doesn't it I suppose yeah. and it's not actually saying well we forget about them because you never will but it's just about moving forward with life um yeah no exactly yeah and I've got to that hmm much as I have for mine you know because if I 
I sat around being really miserable all day, every day. That's no health. That's not healthy for the girls. No, they need to see that there is life after a, a tragedy, that there is life after things have happened. And you can pick yourself up and you can be happy again. You're not going to be like, not going to be the same. It's going to be different. But you are entitled to have happiness in your life and you're entitled to be loved again. Um, yeah. And it is hard. It's really weird. You know, try, and dating at my age, geez, it's not easy. There are some well, don't go there the ones out there um yeah and that is tough but you can have fun trying <laughs> you know well, yeah exactly. yeah but it's like it like you say it's like it's it's all a choice really and I suppose the world throws things at you like I chose I've chosen not to date yeah. so you know I've just said well whatever comes along comes along I don't want to be on a dating app or whatever because I've done that seen that got the t-shirt at the video and yeah, no thanks. But uh, that might be somebody else's, you know, as other people's choices, and that's okay. That's cool. And I sit there and go, well, it's the world will throw some person at me when it feels that it's the right time to throw that person at me, and we just yeah. go from there, basically. So okay, exactly. so look, um, look, thank you for coming and talking to me because I know it's your morning and stuff like that. If um. If people want to look at your artwork and bits and pieces like that or get in t- contact with you, are you like, do you have a website or do you have every, anything that, because if they want to talk to you about bereavement or, you know, anything like that, is that how do they contact yeah. you? Because they can contact you through me, but. Probably the easiest. Yeah, yeah I'm fine with that. Um, probably the easiest is probably Facebook, okay. my art page, which is Lindley Art. Okay. Is L I N L. Okay. All right. I'll post that. I'll post that down um, in the blurb um, as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably the easiest way. I mean, you can email me. I'll ping you my email address so that you've got. Yeah. That. Well, I, so I've already got. I've already, already got, got your email, email address. address so yeah. What I'll do is, if anyone wants to talk to Lindsay about anything, um, even art, even if you want to buy some of Lindsay's art because she does sell the art. Um, yeah, <laughs> then you can do. So, yeah, exactly. Um, and it like, wow, the, I mean, your artwork is amazing. I look at it and go, wow, this is like, I've known you for 20 odd years, you know, like, how, have, how is this coming out of you? But it like, yeah, yeah, you know, and um, yeah, the we us two saddies sometimes when we talk on Facebook, we'll like show each other our new pieces of artwork, which is um, quite funny. Um, but look, uh, look, thank you so much for coming on board, uh, chatting with me for like the last, well, it's nearly two hours now. Um, and um, look, I, I always ask all my guests this last question. So if you could have a superpower, what would it be? What would it be, mate? Time mm. travel. I wondered if that would be your answer. Wow. Yeah, um, no, yeah. that's fair enough. I can understand completely. I, no, I'd like I'd like to be able to travel back way back in time and see how weird like Victorians are. I I, I love history. Yeah. So it would be really but I would also love to be able to go into the future and see what it holds. But yeah, mm. I think it would be I think if I Oh, I'm not sure that. I'd want to do future travel. I'm not sure I'd want to see the earth in like a hundred years time. Cause I'm not sure if we'd have an earth there, but um, yeah, I wouldn't mind traveling mm-hmm. back to like a few weeks ago to get the lotto numbers and then I could win like 20 million. <laughs> yeah. And then we, yeah, yeah I know. Nice it'd be great. Well, no, we're not letting anyone in mate. Yeah, yeah. There's no one coming in and no one going out of Australia oh, no. at the minute. Like you, even if you're Australian, you can't come in. Well, <laughs> I know. It's just don't go there. Blooming, blooming nightmare. But hopefully, this nightmare will all be finished soon. We'll all be vaxxed up to the max, and um, yeah, we'll have to see. Because I know two people who are gagging to come over to Australia at the minute and to see their grandson, not necessarily to see me, um, but yeah, to see their grandson and give him a big hug. And um, yeah, so at the moment we've had. Oh, nearly two years of FaceTime, which is like yeah, awesome. Difficult. But yeah. Wow. Okay, look, thank you so much for coming on board um and doing this. I 
wasn't sure. I didn't want to upset you. I wasn't sure about like bringing you on board to talk about like John and bits and pieces like that. Because look, I think it's important because it's another way, you know, I mean, we all think of being a single parent is that you've divorced your partner and you're bringing up, but, but no, there's a lot of people who are out there in your position who have lost through heart attacks, accidents, you know, any, you know, it's just, yeah covid um mm. and having to deal with this and bring up kids on their own like toddlers or like older kids um yeah, yeah. and having to deal with all of that is um yeah horrendous so well thank it's you, a, buddy. it's a poster, isn't it we learn to ride them well we do i just wish it would be more fun sometimes than it is yeah. um shit more of a know. lazy river than a yeah river. lazy river would be lovely give me a rubber <laughs> ring any day <laughs> All right, buddy. Look, look after yourself. Have a good one, and I will speak to you later. Yes. Here you are. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast and would like to hear more, please hit subscribe wherever you like to hear podcasts. If you'd like to support us further, share this episode with your friends and family on all the usual social media platforms that you're normally on. And finally drop us a review on iTunes as I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, and ideas. It all helps me to understand and produce awesome content that I know you're going to want to hear like this. If you want to check out past episodes, write to us, appear on the podcast, or for links, resources, and show notes, go to our website, www.strongsingleandhuman.com. We are also on all the usual social media platforms, Insta, Facey, and Twitter. Have a wonderful week, and I hope to see you back here again soon. Be kind to yourself, and remember, no one's perfect, and we're all just putting one foot in front of the other and doing our best. I'm Claire Martin, and you've been listening to the Strong, Single, and Human podcast.